Tonight, the first installment in our new investigative series, Beyond the Books. Yeah, this is an in-depth look into issues affecting education all across the state of Utah. Our first story, the controversial views of an outspoken member of the Utah State Board of Education. Chris Jones is on this one for us tonight. Well, her name is Lisa Cummins. She rose to power attacking Common Core, a set of standards for teaching and testing English and math. Now, Cummins rails against so-called leftist and communist, who she says have infiltrated the federal government and the Utah Board of Education. Beyond the Books decided to investigate how her views outside the school board room affect her votes inside. I only understand that it impacted us like a bomb going off. Catherine Vute is one of seven Harriman High School mothers to lose their children during a cluster of suicides in the summer of 2017. It's a loss to the entire world and community that these other children are taking their lives without understanding what is going on. And on May 3rd, she begged the Utah State School Board to provide more resources to prevent the needless loss of life. There's something going on, and you all have the ability to make a difference. But then just moments later... Where are the communities of, of pastors and preachers and religious organizations? And with Vute still in the room, the board member who represents her suggested that the complex issue of suicide could be blamed on two things, a lack of religion and parents like Catherine Vute. Where are the organizations of parents who need to step up and accept accountability and responsibility? It was yet another in a long line of controversial comments and votes from District 11 board member Lisa Cummins. We are overworking our children. Because of contentious stands like this. This battle that I am fighting is a battle of the souls of these children. And comments like these to the Utah State Board before she was even a member. The elite of this country have commingled with the communistic-like leadership. Beyond the Books, KUTV's commitment to investigate educational issues that affect you decided to investigate Cummins' record, including board meetings and her social media activity. I also declare that if you insist on collecting data from my children, you had better bring a warrant. While on the board, Cummins applauds teaching truth. I just think we have a responsibility um, to teach truth. But some of her posts on social media say otherwise. Here's a post of an article that suggests liberals are trying to make child molesting okay. And yet another that argues that vaccinations are a form of population control. The disinformation, the half-truths that she's sharing. Katie Matheson with the political watchdog group Alliance for a Better Utah says Cummins' posts are alarming. Before she shares something, research it. So I can track it. During our investigation, we also reviewed nearly 40 separate meetings over two years that Cummins has attended as a board member. Based on her record, we found that Cummins risks millions in federal funding, wastes valuable meeting time, and is so fearful of so-called data mining by the government that some say she is willing to put Utah students at risk. I, I don't know. I'm not comfortable. Case in point, while the state was trying to get its arms around the burgeoning suicide epidemic... Um, so this is a huge concern for me. Cummins was questioning the Safe Utah app. The smartphone tip line created to allow Utah students to report violence and suicide threats in their schools. She feared it would allow the government to track the students. Uh, so it doesn't have a locator tracking system on it, just so It doesn't you know. track their location no, from it their does phone. Not. And Even though she was assured the data was safe. There have been actually tips on school attacks. And suicides had been prevented because of the app. It's not only saving lives, but being able to save what's going on in the school. Cummins. So I'm going to vote no on this. Voted against a $70,000 appropriation that was needed to keep the app up and running during an unexpected redesign. Those opposed? I see one op opposed uh, board member, Lisa Cummins. Cummins was the sole member to vote against the money, and had she gotten her way, the Safe Utah app would have gone dark, at least temporarily. <laughs> We have a significant opportunity here to lead the nation. In this meeting, Cummins suggests that the state should ignore federal testing requirements, a move that, if adopted, could have put $123 million in federal funding at risk, money that goes directly to poor Utah kids. We have uh, th the um, courage to fund that, uh, uh, to fund what's missing, um, put, put our money where our mouth is. A stand that drew the ire of fellow board member Kathleen Reby. Playing chicken with $100 million when these students 
who have the least amount of advocates for them are the ones that are losing the most. Could you just give me some more clarity? We also spoke with six people who work closely with Cummins on the board who agreed to speak to us anonymously. They tell us Cummins doesn't understand some of the very basics of education management. I mean, because to me, this looks like an expansion of government. And they say she wastes valuable time giving political speeches, slowing the board that is supposed to work for students and parents. Hi, Lisa. My name is Chris Jones. I'm a reporter with Two News. We wanted to talk to Cummins, and she did agree to a sit-down interview, then canceled. First, she said it was because she needed to register her son in high school, but later told us it was because she'd been told not to talk to the press. We grew concerned we wouldn't get another chance to clarify her views. Hello? Hi, Lisa. Hi, Chris Jones from Channel 2. Oh, you came to my house. Yeah, can we talk to you? We... So we asked to talk to her face to face. We have time now. I mean, it looks like you're available. I mean, we, we feel like it's important to give you an opportunity. She didn't want to speak on this day, but did reschedule on the spot. I have the 15th. Only to cancel what days later. On the I've 15th been advised hour. not to talk with you, though. Cummins then demanded we submit a list of questions, which we did. Two days later, she requested the names of the people who had talked to us for our story, but she did not provide any answers. I would like to see what they come out with. On the board, Cummins demands a lot of answers. Well, I'm telling you what they're saying. I am. But is less willing to give them when the tables are turned. Turn off the camera. So Cummins did uh, send us, uh, did not respond to any of the questions that we sent to her, but she did have a statement, and this is how it reads. She says, uh, quote, KUTV uh, and reporter Chris Jones have used abuse and dishonesty to try and attack and vilify me. KUTV and Chris Jones are working in league with others to promote an anti-family agenda that will oppose local control of education in Utah. Now, uh, there are other things that she said that have been considered relatively controversial. Mm -hmm. If you go to our website, KUTV.com, you can read about those. And also, if you know of a story that has an education slant that you think needs to be investigated, you can uh, submit uh, that on the website as well. The process of school board elections, I mean, is this something that people can vote on? It yeah, this is, a, this is an elected office, right. so she's been in office for uh, two years, elected. Uh, she was opposed, of course, during the, uh, during the debates and that sort of thing, but uh, she won by, uh, by about three points. So okay. these elections matter. They and do. you can kind of read some of the other statements that she's made on her web, right? That's right, yeah, we've got that all on KUTV.com. And also, if anybody has a education-related issue, they can get to you and you can look into it, right? That's right. We, you go to our website, you can submit that idea there. All right, Chris, thank Thanks, you very Chris. much. Appreciate it.